What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? Monday, November 10th, 2025. We've just passed through a barrage of X-Class solar flares one after another, firing at Earth. Four X-Flares in a single week, several M-Flares in between, and still barely a ripple on the ground. A few brief radio blackouts, some auroras, maybe a mild G2 geomagnetic storm at best. Around every major solar event, ionospheric heating facilities like HARP in Alaska, ICAT in Norway, Super Darn's radar network, and others come online. They beam billions of megawatts into the upper atmosphere, heating plasma, twisting magnetic field lines, and carving resonant cavities into the ionosphere. These experiments are always labeled research, yet their timing often overlaps with natural solar disturbances. If the magnetosphere functions as a feedback loop, artificial electromagnetic input could alter that loop, dampening incoming energy or even reflecting it. It's not speculation that these systems inject energy into the same regions that the sun interacts with. The only question is, how much control have they achieved? The repeated coincidences, transmissions, solar polarity flips, and the airy calm that follows, they don't look random, they look synchronized. Earlier this week, satellites recorded a sudden reversal in solar wind polarity. The magnetic field flipped orientation, and instead of coupling with Earth's field, it was repelled, as if something pushed back. Coincidentally, ISCAT's own public schedule showed active experiments during that same window. It's a pattern that becomes impossible to ignore. Ionospheric heating during solar alignment followed by unexpected deflection or dissipation of geomagnetic impacts. Maybe humanity has reached a point of being able to modulate the magnetosphere itself, a man-made buffer built through decades of experimentation. Or maybe this is something darker, a test of planetary tuning where the natural electrical circuits between Earth and the Sun are being deliberately adjusted. We know that every time the Sun erupts the world's ionospheric heating networks, HARP, ISCAT, SuperDARN, they light up with transmissions. They're beaming billions of megawatts into the upper atmosphere. Meanwhile, the human body feels these shifts firsthand. Sensitive people are already reporting the telltale signs, ears ringing, dizziness, pressure headaches, heart palpitations. When the atmosphere vibrates at certain frequencies, the human body becomes an antenna. You feel it with your nervous system before instruments can even confirm it. So if you felt off balance today, you're not imagining it. The sky is charged, the sun is firing, and the ground is humming back. This isn't just space weather, it's the planet and everything living on it responding to the electromagnetic stress. And taking a look at the National Weather Service, a powerful Arctic air mass is driving south tonight, locking nearly two-thirds of the country into an early season cold snap. The National Weather Service has issued a widespread web of freeze warnings, winter weather advisories, and lake effect snow warnings stretching from the Dakotas through the Great Lakes and into the Northeast. Behind the cold front, temperatures are plunging fast. Record lows are likely across portions of the Midwest and the Southeast by morning. The dry polar air is sweeping over the still warm waters of the Great Lakes, setting up a textbook lake effect event. Narrow snow bands capable of dumping one to two feet of snow downwind of lakes, Superior, Michigan, Erie, and Ontario. Visibility in those corridors will collapse almost instantly under whiteout conditions. Farther south, the map shows red flag warnings and high wind watches across parts of Texas and the Gulf Coast. Those zones mark collision between dry continental air and subtropical moisture. Perfect conditions for erratic winds, brush fires, and sharp temperature swings. This combination of polar intrusion plus lake effect moisture is a classic signature of early winter instability, deep cold aloft and rapid surface cooling and extreme pressure. 
Expect continued gusty winds through midweek along with dangerous wind chills north of the Ohio Valley. Travel near the Great Lakes could become hazardous as snow squalls form and dissipate without warning. The bottom line is the nation is splitting along a thermal fault line, frigid to the north and volatile to the south. The pattern itself isn't unusual for November, but the intensity and the suddenness are. So stay alert, stay updated, watch the advisories, and if you're under a lake effect snow warning, keep your gear ready. This one could linger longer than the forecast suggests. Okay, sky watchers, stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.